Hello, my name is Carrie Brown and I'm with the Central Mississippi Regional Library System. Today I'm going to be reading to you Arthur and the Comet Crisis, a Mark Brown Arthur chapter book. Text by Stephen Krinsky, based on a teleplay by Peter Hirsch, and published by Little, Brown, and Company. Chapter 3 The brain was eating lunch in the school cafeteria when Buster walked up and stood before him. You need to stop eating for a moment, he said. I do, said the brain. Why? So you can feast your eyes on this. He thrust a photograph under the brain's nose. The brain examined the picture. It's very nice, he said. Good composition. Buster waved the photo. Never mind the composition. You wanted proof of a UFO. Now you've got it. That's not proof, said the brain. That's a shooting star. Or, in more scientific terms, a small object, such as a meteoroid, entering the Earth's atmosphere and burning up. Hm. Buster snatched the photo back and stomped away. I'm not done yet. We'll see who's an uncle's monkey, Mr. Smarty Pants. The next day at the library, the brain was cleaning the book return counter when the door opened. Prepare yourself, cried Buster. Shh, said the brain. This is a library, remember? Have it your way, Buster whispered. Prepare yourself. The brain folded his arms. For what? Buster brought out several photographs and held the one on top. For this, he declared. The brain took a look. He yawned. That's not a UFO, Buster. How can you say that? It's much too big to be a star. True, said the brain, and too big to be a spacecraft as well. Actually, it's Jupiter. Jupiter? The planet? You know, the biggest one in our solar system? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it, he frowned. Okay, then, what about this? He took out another picture. Ah, well said the brain. That's definitely not a star or a planet. What did I tell you, said Buster? It's the crosswire blimp. I read in the newspaper that Muffy's father was starting a new ad campaign for his dealership. A blimp? Buster's face fell. I was so sure. Buster, you have to remember, the night sky is filled with all kinds of things. What about legs? Legs? Yes, legs. Do you see a lot of legs in the night sky? No, the brain admitted. I guess not. Then how about this, Mr. Answer Man? He handed his last picture to the brain. Well, well, not a planet, is it? Said Buster. Nope. Not a blimp either, Buster went on. Nope, the brain said again. Buster smiled. Then how do you explain the legs? It's a fly. A fly? Buster laughed. <laughs> How would a fly get into space? It wouldn't, said the brain. It must have been sitting on the lens when you took the picture. The brain stood up and got a book from one of the shelves. Here, he said, this is a book on astronomy. Instead of asking me questions every five minutes, why don't you just see if there's a picture of it in here first? If you're still confused, then we can talk. Buster took the book and slunk away. At that moment, he didn't feel like talking to anyone. Chapter 4 That evening, Buster sat alone in the treehouse, eating an apple from the basket of food his mother had just brought him. I'll show the brain, he muttered to himself. He's not the only one around here who knows something about star power. I know the moon when I see it, and I know it's not made of green cheese, he paused. At least... I don't think it is, because if it was, wouldn't a lot of mice live there? He looked through the telescope. Blinking light. That's a plane. More blinking lights. Hey! What's that? He snapped the camera button, and a moment later, the picture came out of the printer. It showed a bright, fuzzy ball with a long, white tail. Buster picked up the astronomy book and flipped through it. He came to a page with a picture much like, much like the one in his hand. Oh, it's just a comet. Nothing special about that. Unless, of course, it's a very clever UFO pretending to be a comet on the outside, while on the inside it's an alien invasion spaceship. He started to read aloud. 
Comets are big pieces of dirty ice, blah, 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 only rarely found by amateur astronomers. Buster paused. He knew it wouldn't be easy to put a spaceship inside a giant snowball, but who could be sure what these aliens were capable of? He continued reading. To calculate the orbit of the comet, observe its movement over a period of days. Buster looked up. That might be good to do. If it didn't act like a regular comet, then he would know that aliens were involved. For the next three nights, Buster took a few pictures of the comet at exactly eight o'clock. He didn't say anything to his friends about this because he didn't want them laughing at him again. All I need is proof of something, he told himself, and they won't be laughing anymore. After taking the three pictures, Buster sat down at the telescope and read from the instruction manual. Once he fed in all the data he had collected on the comet, the computer would do some computing and the screen would show him the comet's projected path. Let's see, that's everything. Now, press F12. He pressed the button and a map of the solar system filled the computer screen. A flashing dot was moving across it, getting closer and closer to the Earth. That shows the comet's path so far, and one more step will show where it's going. He pressed another button and the flashing lights changed from green to red. As Buster watched in disbelief, the red lights continued on a straight line until they hit the earth. Warning, said the computer. The object at right ascension 3.6 hours plus 20 degrees will collide with earth in five weeks. Have a nice day. Buster blinked. Huh? He said. Thank you. Join us next week for chapters 5 and 6. Goodbye!